What's up, comic book fans? I'm Dinosaur Neil. And I'm Ghost Hunter Dave. And we are here to find out if you're one of us or you're one of them things. <laughs> All right, we made it back. The other people in our party had to cut them loose. Oh, yeah. They had to go. My family, our, <laughs> our New Year's Eve visitors, all gone. Burned alive. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, Neil, thanks for joining me in our shack. You're welcome. Out of the elements. Mm -hmm. To discuss uh, one of my all-time favorite movies, oh. a formative flicks, yeah. if I can. And something we've started quite a tradition on. That's right. Every New Year's Eve, yep. it seems, we will uh, we'll watch the thing, and then we light off some flares afterwards in the backyard. It's awesome. <laughs> it's what MacReady would have wanted us to do. <laughs> yeah, other than maybe pouring a beverage into a chess machine that beat him. But That's right. But we do what we can. We have the beverages, <laughs> yeah. so all we need to find is a computer that can beat us at chess. <laughs> yeah. So far, nothing stepped up. This, saying this movie was a formative flicks, uh, it's... It happened much later in life than most of the movies that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. So it was probably high school age that I was first introduced to the thing. And I remember blind buying VHS copy of it at wow. Suncoast Video when I was in high school because McFarlane Toys, of which I was an adamant collector of their Movie Maniacs line, did two thing figures. And I was like, what are these? What, what are these what? things? <laughs> like I better buy this movie and check it out and I remember initially being kind of unimpressed by it the on your first viewing of the movie yeah yeah wow. I watched it and I was like it's okay wow you know, I thought it was a little slow I thought there was too many characters to keep track of and the monster moments which were great were kind of few and far between I mm -hmm. thought mm -hmm. but then over time I rewatched it and it became a movie that I rewatched often and it was one that every time I watched it i appreciated it more and more and my enjoyment grew and there was just so much to like puzzle over and investigate with every viewing that i think that's what won me over and i love that actually kind of elevates the movie for me too because of all the fan theories of things that may or may not be true of what you've heard and it all seems to kind of line up because the whole movie is really out to dupe you into oh, guessing yeah. a who's who anyway so anything that throws you off the scent or puts you back on is exhilarating mm -hmm. and as far as you just picking a blind copy from a shelf this has one of the coolest box cover oh arts God, of all time. Like yep. the, the hooded snowy man. The Drew Struzan. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's awesome. Like that is something Iconic anybody would just cover. grab and be like, what is going on here? Yep. So this is a, a great movie for me because I showed this to my kids a couple years ago. They're w probably way too young, but I showed it to them. Yeah. And it's just become ingrained into our family lexicon now. Like we quote it often <laughs> and... Uh, to this day, they still refer to huskies as thing puppies. <laughs> that is just what they're called in our house. Roman, my oldest one, I remember not too long ago, he was even like conversing with me on his own theories about like who's infected, who, and who's human at various times of the movie. And I just love that. That's like, incredible. Yeah, he just he's really thinking it over, working yeah. it all out. When I was little, like Predator was my movie like that. That was me and my dad's movie. Yeah. So for me to be able to share the thing oh. with them, it's it's carrying on that tradition of just of a 80s gross movie, movie. <laughs> that you shouldn't be showing young people, but they see, see it anyway. It's their favorite. That's thing. right. It's influ It's formative. Well, that's what we're here for. That's right. I put up the banner and everything. <laughs> yeah. I had to pull it when we were talking about turtles. Makes sense. Not formative enough. Doesn't hold a candle to this thing. No way. Did you get the pun? Did. All right, <laughs> you didn't really acknowledge it. I thought maybe well, it went over your head. <laughs> it was too good, too smart. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so this is a movie that, upon its release, it was kind of just brushed off. I remember early reviews said it was just a mess, a disgusting schlock, and for a long time, I think it was appreciated, but it never like really took off. I feel like in mm. the public consciousness, outside of like underground horror fans, you know. But recently, I feel like it's finally kind of reached the level of like, oh yeah, The Thing is one of the greatest monster movies of all time. I agree. Um, you do hear more of it now, and it's weird that it would have gotten a lower reception because the cast, and not only that, it's got some of the coolest, best practical effects you can put in a movie. Oh my god. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, they, they were ahead of the time, at the time, and they still hold up 
magnificently today. I, yeah. There's stuff in that that I watch and I'm just like, how on earth <laughs> did they do that? The spider head, for example, yeah. as it like separates from the body and crawls off. Like, that is insane animatronic work. Wizardry. And not only that, but as you said, the cast. Performances are great throughout the board. Like, mm -hmm. the characters, once, once you wrangle all of them, because yeah. it is a big cast, yeah. but like, you pick out all these little nuances, and Kurt Russell is McCready. Just... <sighs> That standard, so classic, great. stoic hero. That hat. That mane of hair and full beard <laughs> yeah. and that hat. Yeah. Oh, my the God. The most inappropriate hat to wear in that weather. <laughs> it's <laughs> but he does off it. your head. Oh, right yeah. Away. And it's weird that it wasn't immediately, like, accepted into, like, the pop culture mm. zeitgeist. Because there are so many great, like, iconic moments of this. But it never, like... It wasn't ever, like, alien. Yeah. Like, for every 50 aliens, pop culture memorabilia, there's, like, one of the thing. So it makes it more special. That's why I gotta buy all of these treasures <laughs> as they come out. But before we wrap up the movie, I would be remiss if I didn't also mention it as just an amazingly haunting score. Minimalist score. Yes, that foreboding uh, Ennio Maricone yeah. score of just the boom, boom. <sighs> Which has been kind of riffed off on other horror movies. Mm -hmm. The Descent does it yeah. big time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just so great. It perfectly just captures like that paranoia and the suspense of something just like below the surface. <sighs> Surprising everyone, they actually went and did a prequel movie to it in 2011, I think. Yeah. Which I can't imagine a studio being like... Yeah, let's make a prequel to this movie that isn't really that widely known. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and make sure that this ties in completely with the events of that film. Right. But they did it anyway. And then they went and, like, created these amazing practical effects for the creatures in it. Yeah. But then in a last-minute terrible studio decision, Ugh. they went and basically just pasted computer-generated layers over top of it. It just wrecked all that practical effects work. That's just sickening to hear about. And you have to, you feel for the oh special God, effects yeah. artists. You can look up on YouTube and they have like their initial tests of mm -hmm. it and it looks amazing. The, the premise of that one too is, it's actually quite interesting because it takes, it's in the exact, it's in with the like the same 48 hour time frame as yeah. like the first one essentially. A lot of times prequels kind of kill any uh, suspense because you know how it wraps up, but you don't really know what happens to all of the crew and the cast yeah. of this. So it was intriguing to see like, okay, how is this going to lead to this? Or like, you know, someone puts an axe in the door and you're like, oh, that's the axe. That's yeah. how it gets yeah. there. <laughs> Things like that, which are just like. It doesn't add a whole lot to the plot, but it's kind of cool if you've seen the original. Yeah. And you can pick out all these little Easter eggs. The only issue is just like that uh, little bit of studio tampering there, which I think held it back from being a pretty decent, well-regarded mm -hmm. entry into the franchise yeah. to something that people really dismiss because of like how overly CGI it is, which is a shame. It is Because it's shame. not bad. However, the prequel is not the only addition to the Thing Mythos because... Here we are, top of the hour. We're getting wow. to the Here comic talk of this Here episode. Here we go. That's what we do. In 1991, Dark Horse Comics published a two-part sequel to the original film uh, following McCready's further exploits in the Antarctic tundra. Yeah. It's called The Thing from Another World, which takes the title of the original Howard Hawks film, which was an ad adaptation of the original <laughs> short story... That in more heavily inspired the remake, the John Carpenter the Good thing. Good lord! <laughs> and I think they only called it that because they didn't want anyone confused with the Marvel thing. Could so, be, yeah. <laughs> a lot of weaving there. Yeah. But um, that's, it that's where the title came from. <laughs> and we'll talk about other things yeah. about this yeah. as well. Like for instance, who wrote it? Yeah. Which was uh, Chuck Farner with art by John Higgins, who was the colorist of Watchmen and The Killing Joke. Yeah. I would say the parts, artwork parts, in, okay. in, in those first, in the first two ones, issues. It's unique. I it would is. Say. The follow up sequels, yeah. which, yes, there's more, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, are more traditional comics yeah. from the 90s. Yeah. And I, what I'll say about these right off the bat is they read exactly like, a like an early 90s comic book. <laughs> yes. They're pretty, like, direct. Like, they're just like. They're blowing through this. Yeah. Not I, a ton of dialogue. I would say devoid of any tension. <laughs> Correct. Correct. And, I mean, the first, this first miniseries is only two issues. So there's mm -hmm. not a whole lot of time for character development. Right. But it just picks up with McCready, like, wandering around, 
and then just like shotgunning through various obstacles <laughs> as he's yeah. trying to like get out of there and also hunt down any remaining things. And it also plays it really fast and loose with how this how the thing assimilates people. Yeah. To the point where I was like, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, like like we're experts, I know experts on the murder, but yeah. I know it's not that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, there's one good thing that I'll give it is the writer. If you read his line, Kurt Russell's lines, like Kurt Russell, it's nearly it like spot on. It's great. It's yep. like something that John Carpenter would have written himself in the thing. So, like, yeah. it's awesome. So, that was a very brief talk about the first <laughs> yeah. volume, which, not great, but I guess it it's something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it exists. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> in case you didn't know there was anything comics, there are. <laughs> they exist. And here's some of them. <laughs> they did a follow-up like a year later, written by Dark Horse legend uh, John Arcudi oh, wow. of BPRD fame. Nice. Along with Rumble and a slew of other really good books. I generally like him as yep. a writer. And illustrated in, the, like we said, the more traditional comic line work of John Somerville. Yeah. And this one picks up where the previous one ended, mm -hmm. which was McCready and Childs are in like a submarine. Yeah. It all moves. How we got quickly. there? I don't so you remember. You gotta get there. It's two issues. They're in a submarine by the end of it. I feel like that first that first two issue volume, it moves so rocket fast and nothing really important ever happened that by the end of it, I couldn't remember a goddamn thing that I've read. That's kind of the... It was just so glossed over in surface true. level. And there are uh, a lot of that... In these four issues as <laughs> yeah. well, so it's okay. Yeah, this one, I feel like the fact that it has two more issues, I feel like it gives it a little bit more time to, like, establish some characters. Yeah. And there's a little bit more tension on, like, who could be a thing. It's not a whole lot better, but I think <laughs> this series is better. It's, yeah, it is. I find that strange, though, because it takes it to a whole new place where yes. you're just, like... Uh, this, Argentina. Argentina of all places, like, tropical. It's completely yes. not what you'd think of where the thing is in these cold, secluded places. Yeah, and which I don't hate, because I've often wondered, like, if the thing is not in the Arctic, it's just going to spread everywhere instantly. Well, yeah. Which doesn't really happen. In this, <laughs> no. But it is interesting enough to change the setting, but it also doesn't really feel like the thing to me in that setting as well. Same. Once we he... still got belligerent McCready just yeah. accusing everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's pointing fingers. He's going to fling through anybody. Oh my God. As soon as he gets to that camp, he just lights it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, look over there. He's a what? menace. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But my problem, the problem with it is when they got there, the only, the first thing that popped in my head was, you can't stop it now. Once you get it to a place where oh, there's yeah. living things anywhere, forget about it. Mm -hmm. What are you even trying for anymore? There was an interesting line in this. And again, this one gets a little bit more introspective and creative where mm -hmm. there's some soldiers talking about like, could it, could this thing replicate plant life? Yeah. And they're like, I don't think it can, or else we'd all be dead. Because we're in a jungle. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, interesting. Yeah. Another neat. little fold to little the nugget. yeah to the thing mythology there. Like, makes sense. <laughs> My favorite moment of this book is this part where like they've sedated McCready because he's a wild man at this point. Yeah. A he, beast. He's acting how he looks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at one point, he, like, snaps out of it, gets his hands on a machine gun, and they're like, where's McCready? And then they just hear him opening fire on a pen of sheep. Just killing sheep! <laughs> just, like, taking it all down! And they subdue him, finally. And, like, the rest of the crew is like, oh, my God. Call in the cook. We need to see if we can salvage yeah. any of this meat. And then the cook comes up, this weird, lanky dude, and he's looking at the dead sheep, and he goes... Poor Carla, you had so much milk to still give us. Now it can only be the grill for you. Yeah. <laughs> I had to write that down because I thought that was just the most amazing line. There is there is a bit of comedy in that too because right before that, they're all talking about how they're sick of eating mutton. Mm. And now we're like, well, I guess we gotta eat all of this sheep <laughs> We have to now. eat all of these sheep <laughs> before we can leave. Yep. Oh, but lo and behold... One of those sheep was the thing. Oh, it was. A thing in sheep's clothing, yeah. if you will. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and uh, through wool tendrils, assimilates that poor chef. They open fire on it, and there's this goofiest panel where this weird prehensile mouth just yeah. like, twists out and goes, Help me! <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Burns. <laughs> yeah. It was something out of like a Tex Avery cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> like when the mask blows that yeah. horn. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> yeah. This one also has a lot of very ridiculous thing creatures. Yeah. There's one where the guy essentially just melts into like a big pool of silly putty and then he's just like washing over people. Yeah. And I guess if that's what the thing wants to do, who are we to say any differently? Exactly. But it's not your traditional thing. No. The first volume was more just like spiky tendrils yeah. and everything. This one, it goes all over the place. Right. To the point where we are reintroduced to Childs, he somehow makes he's it back. back. He's always back. He's always back. And then he immediately turns into like a thing eight man. <laughs> yeah. And then immediately leaves. And like, well, yep. that was of no consequence. <laughs> yeah. And it essentially just ends with them facing a big old thing monster in like a like an aircraft hangar. Yeah. And it just getting napalmed. Pretty and they're much. like, well, I guess that's it. And then McCready's like, not quite. No. I've got to track down every last one of these things. <laughs> and at this point, you're like, how would you even know, McCready? Yeah, just take on. the win yeah, and move yeah. on. Yeah, please just leave. Go yep. home. Oh, boy. And if you loved seeing that blood test where they put a hot thing <laughs> into a Petri dish, boy, does this have a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a notable moment in the original, so they recreate it several <laughs> times. <laughs> It's like, a, it's the COVID test it of is. that era. It is. It's like, anytime you leave the house, you're like, well, fuck, should I take, should I take one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows what I got into out there. Right. They're just slicing their fingers. So I'm like, how'd you cut your finger, Neil? So I'd like to say that is the last entry of the Thing comic series, but it's in fact just the last one that I asked you to read. There is one more. Oh, good. Eternal Vows. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even ask you to read it. Thank it's you. okay. It's, you're Appreciate probably better off not knowing, but I I wanted to cover this right. This one was written by Dave Deveries and art by Paul Glossy. But this one is kind of an erotic murder mystery set in a small New Zealand fishing village. But before you say anything, it's not as good as that description sounds. <laughs> oh shit. As I wrote it, I'm like, this sounds kind of good. And I'm like, but it wasn't. <laughs> so <laughs> Who knows what happened here? A lot of important things just seem to happen off panel <laughs> to the point where like this woman, the main character is like, oh my God, I can't believe my husband died. And you're like, when did that happen? <laughs> like he was just there. Did I miss a page? <laughs> So it's kind of, it's just haphazard. Oh my god. The one thing that I feel like is intriguing about this is it's kind of told from the thing's point of view a little bit because this woman gets infected by her husband who is also infected by the thing. He passes it on to her and it like slowly starts to take her over. Okay. So it's a little more sympathetic to that, but they don't ever get into it enough to like make any statement hmm. and it's again very vague and obtuse and you're like i don't think this is how the thing works hmm. but as you would assume mccready finds his way oh, of to course. that small he's new, in new zealand now that small new zealand town and he fucking burns <laughs> it to the ground <laughs> does he have a thing detector or is he just killing he's, everyone he sees he's just burning every <laughs> village to the ground <laughs> as he makes his way from coast oh, to coast good lord pretty forgettable maybe the maybe the weirdest of the batch but not in a good or entertaining way more mm. of a confusing head scratching like are there pages missing type right. of way <laughs> oh great so you could skip it you could skip all of them realistically yeah. but i as the thing being one of my favorite movies i was intrigued to see where the story continued but that that's kind of it for a while for a while. That's right. But this one is so far removed. The last official Thing comic was written by Steve Niles and nice. illustrated by Patrick Reynolds. Yeah. And this was done in conjunction with the release of the prequel. And it's called uh, Northman Nightmare. Yeah. This one was actually, for being one issue, kind of solid. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe the fact that it was one issue. That could have been. Although this is the only one of these where I feel like, oh, I could have used Use a more. more I know. <laughs> but it basically follows a group of Vikings in mm -hmm. Greenland, yeah. I think, who run uh, across the thing and they have their own adventure with it. And it plays out kind of similar to mm -hmm. all the other thing adventures, but just from a different past perspective yeah. with a bunch of like just rough and tough Vikings and uh, 
Not bad. That's it. Yeah, it's yep. just pretty solid. <laughs> it's like, what it sounds like. Yeah. And if that sounds good, it's like, well, that's what it is. It's essentially <laughs> just the Thing movie, but just with uh, Vikings. Yeah. And no technology, really. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty interesting. All right, so that brings us to the end of the officially licensed Thing publications. Wow. With the exception of a video game from 22, 2002. From 2002. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the what? fuck? Going yeah, on. You're talking about? <laughs> but wait, there is one more non official entry courtesy of Ooh. sci fi writer Peter Watts. Yeah. Which uh, I feel, and I, I think you probably feel the same way, is probably the greatest companion piece to the original thing film. Yes. And actually sheds brand new light on the mythos as a whole. Very much so. This was a very good read, yeah. I think. <laughs> so this is a short story called The Things, mm -hmm. published in 2010 in Clark's World magazine. And it's essentially a retelling of the movie The Thing from the perspective of the alien. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so <laughs> cool. Because uh, it, it, it goes over some really deep topics mm -hmm. for a short story and it's really cool how the the writer has the thing think oh yeah it's it's train of thought is so interesting and how it perceives everything outside of itself is so cool yeah it never acts maliciously no and it's always it's constantly confused by the way that people are behaving so that, like, it realizes it needs to look like them to hide. Yeah. Like, it's terrified. That It's like, why did they raise me from the ice just to want to kill me the second I released? Why yeah. didn't they just destroy me when I was still frozen in the ice? And my probably my favorite aspect of it is how it's, like, how it describes, like... The communion? The communion and, how like... How it assimilates yeah. and how it also, like... How it shares information among the various offshoots of the whole. Yeah. And it goes in, like, you almost feel bad for it. Because he's like, I've lived on planets. I've accumulated all of this knowledge through thinging around the universe. <laughs> yes. And all of that is lost now because they keep destroying parts of me who have lost all these memories of this right. and that. And you're just like, oh my god. Like, and all It's it almost like multiple man. How it, it can is. send out, it like, its multiples, but they have to come back to the whole yeah. to, like, Fully. share the information. Yeah. And if it doesn't get to do that, if they can't all, if all the things can't, like, reconvene, then those pieces are lost. Yeah. And the, how it describes, like, the human condition, kind of, of, like, mm -hmm. all of these things. Like, oh, I found where its, like, squishy nervous system is to where it processes all of its information. It's so sad and lonely yeah. and it's like why doesn't it share itself yeah. with everything else and like and when it sees them it's like why are they in that form yeah. it's like so ill-suited it for has this to environment. wear these clothes these yeah. cloths and to like, like survive and that, that quadruped is much better suited he's like why don't these things change why are they so scared to change yeah. and he's like did they forget in this whole it just cannot comprehend yeah. that humans cannot transform yeah and, and I think it's got a, a deeper meaning, too, that humans don't want to change. Yes. And yeah. it's just like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, and he's, he's dropping heavy truths. Yeah. He's like, they're so cut off. They're so lonely. They don't mm -hmm. want to work together. They're yeah. all individualistic. And when he finds out that, like, all of their individual cells can't operate independently and that their entire body is controlled by their brain, mm -hmm. he's just, like, disgusted the whole time it sees itself as like a missionary. Yeah. Like it's going and traveling the cosmos and reshaping the universe for what it perceives as the greater good. Mm -hmm. There's one part where it's assimilating a character and as it's doing it, the character calls it a soul stealing rapist. Yeah. And it says like, he doesn't know what it means, but he can sense there's violence in the thoughts and forceful penetration of the flesh. But he says, like, underneath there's something else and I can't quite understand it. And then his light went out before I could figure it out. Yeah. So he's just, like, tr he's also, like, trying to, like, pick up different aspects of the human condition. Mm -hmm. And trying to, like, 
make sense of it from an alien perspective. <laughs> yeah. Which is so interesting. A lot of this, like, you read it and you're like, what, what does that mean? And then you think deeper, like, well, it's written how, like, an alien would describe something yeah. that we just take for granted. Yeah. So there's all this kind of double meaning to it. Right. And by the end, the creature's pity for the human race basically takes over and it decides it's its duty to just infect and spread its salvation across the world. And yeah. I think uh, the best line is, I will save them from the inside. These poor savage things will never embrace salvation. I will have to rape it into them. Yeah. And that's the last that's line. That's the last which line. Which is amazing because at first it's so off-putting. We were like, hey now, like that's shock value. But it's not because that's it heard yeah. a character say he was raping them. And it didn't quite understand the connotation of what rape <laughs> means. It yeah. just thinks like, Oh, yeah, I gotta rape them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's right. like how an alien would take that. It, it doesn't see the horror in that phrase. No. But to a person, that's like the worst, most off-putting thing you could yeah. describe that as. And it's like, and it's a perfectly double-sided thing of whose point of view you're looking at <laughs> yeah. it from. Whole, the whole story, expertly crafted mm -hmm. and lovingly retold, I feel like. Yeah. You can tell he's just spent hours watching this movie over and over because there's all these intricate little details from mm -hmm. the movie and it also like recontextualizes certain things yeah. where you're like, oh, holy shit. In this, he thinks that person was a thing this whole time. And like, I never would have saw that. Yeah. I never would have picked that out. The thing, in this point of view, sacrifices a bit of himself to try to like trick, hide yeah. or trick. Like the guy who gets his arms bitten off when he paddles like... Copper, the he, doctor, yeah. yeah. He gets his arms bit, but he's a, in the short story, he's a thing at that point. And he's yeah. doing it just to be like, I still need to stay hidden here. To like keep I, up appearances. Yeah. And even the blood test thing. He's like, I think I've got it. Like, he thinks he knows why things are doing it this way. So he's like, oh, oh, thank God that didn't work. Because that's a thing in there, and yeah. I'm glad it didn't. In this, he theorizes that there's different levels of assimilation. Where yeah. if someone is, like, completely assimilated, that blood test will set off. But if it's only, a, you know, if it's slowly taking over the person, it's not going to react like that because yeah. not all the blood is assimilated yet. And he does bring up these different ideas about the assimilation process, yeah. which I wanted to ask you on because I think this is one of the, the one thing about this movie that I can't like completely peg down is like, what exactly happens during the assimilation? Like, does it, does it like gobble someone up? and then, like, transform into them? Does it, like, spit out a new person? Does it, like, infect them secretly and just take over their whole body without any physical change? Or is it, like, all of them? I think it... So, my point of view is all of them. Because in the prequel movie, they show that he grows a new a person. A new person in him. And, and then it's, like, expelled and it's, and it's out. But, like, yeah. obviously, like, that doesn't work how, when you're watching the movie because right, like, they're like you could infect long. someone with like a cell you yeah. could put something in someone's drink and infect them yeah i think but a maybe, lot of it i think it would be a much slower process than yeah just like <laughs> and that's perfect and it's perfectly <laughs> described in this little short story which is a shame it's not like canon within the thing oh, i know because it's like it the way it describes it is like it's slow the person inside is like almost fighting back against the neurological thing of the yeah. like the or they don't the even know what's happening. Yeah, which I think is one of the most interesting aspects of this. And this is something that I had thought of a long time ago, where it's like, do people know they're a thing when they're assimilated, or like until they're fully assimilated, are they like sleeper agents where like they'll only thing out if it's like a reaction. Or if it, like, takes control as a hive mind. Yeah. Because they say, like, it copied Norris so perfectly that it copied his defective heart valve. Mm -hmm. And he had a heart attack. And that was not in its plans. Yeah. So, like, all that happened and he thought he was still human until, like, they shock him and it, like, springs the thing out of him. <laughs> yeah. Like, reflexively. Overall, out of everything we read mm -hmm. associated with the thing, this is... Heads and tails above everything. I would say have that and the movie, the short story in the movie, be like the two like pinnacles of like thing content. That's right. And if you want to throw in the prequel, yeah, it doesn't hurt anything. No, it's still yeah, good. The short story by Peter Watts, The Things, and it's online for free. Mm -hmm. It's from Clark's World Magazine. You just search that and you can find it. Mm -hmm. Not a long read at all. Yeah, so good. And it also does give 
a definitive answer on who is or who isn't a duplicate yeah. during the final scene. Right. Or at least as definitive as you would want to acknowledge a piece of fan fiction. <laughs> yeah, like, right. No one's flat out said, like, John Carpenter hasn't been on record, like, yep, that's it. But, like, it works for this. Yeah. I don't think it, it disregards anything that was canon. Correct. Very good. Not enough thing stuff out there for no. me. That's why I just snatch up everything I can get my hands Might on. Might as well. Like this awesome art book. I bought this, or yeah, for Christmas a while back. This is from Printed in Blood. Awesome. And it's just these just amazing art pieces from all artists across the world that just did like basically thing posters. That's so cool. Love it. Like this perfect coffee table book if you're... Yeah. Uh, weirdo like myself. <laughs> and have a coffee table. That's right. Shit, that's what I'm missing. <laughs> we'll have to get your coffee table for Christmas. Yeah. That's right. I also bought a thousand piece thing jigsaw puzzle. Amazing. No, mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Spent about 10 minutes, I was like, well, this is never getting done. So there's a limit to thing content. There is a limit. <laughs> Glad I have it, but it's it's, it's just in collecting the box, dust. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's in the shed. <laughs> and um, we recently played the thing game. Awesome. You were there. I know. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were telling me, oh, awesome, we played it. And I'm like, do you remember it? A little. You were the thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or was I? Yes, I was. you were. <laughs> yeah, the Thing board game. Very which is, fun. It's From kind Mondo, of like, uh, yeah. Infection on Outpost 31, I think it was called. Something, Something like, like that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, like, it's like a more elaborate clue. I'm trying to think of anything else. Recently, NECA put out some McCready figures, nice. which I've been waiting my entire life for, and I immediately snatch those up, and hopefully there's more to come. The one thing that blows my mind is there's no, like, Funko Pops of the Thing. Are there really? Nothing. Wow. Like, they have a Funko Pop of everything, and you just think how fucking cool some Funko <laughs> Thing Pops would be. Uh, that actually kind of surprises me, that they don't have a McCready McCready with a hat, uh, and a, like a lantern, McCready without a hat. With a flare. All, with a blood test. Oh my god, just oh, a blood test. Bennings with his weird thing hands. <laughs> yes! God damn, get on that. Get on that, Funko. Get it. Get your shit together. Yeah, please. Alright, I think we've made our statement. If you enjoy things, then feel free to join our patron, where yeah. we have several things that we give out to yes. patron backers. We you also bet. have a wonderful thing called our Imperius Rex Discord, Ooh. where you can chat with other friends of the show. But uh, I think that's it. I think yeah. that wraps it up on it's... this cold, wintry day. Yes. So let us know what you think. Have you read the Thing comic books? Have you read the short story already? If let you haven't, see. you need to get on this. You do! And tell us in the comments down below what you thought of all this cool thing content. And until next time, I've been the thing. Oh, shit, oh. a dinosaur Neil. And I've also been the thing. Yep, the thing. Yeah.